that's the biggest struggle. Today, I'm meeting Fraser, the founder of Museart, with print switching records at auction, will tell you what makes a print worth five figures. And have a look at their new show called Nice Guys Live Forever. My first sort of interaction with artists was to sort of speak to them and say, can I have some stickers? And I'd go put them around my city. So I would get sent hundreds of stickers and I'd be up till about two, three in the morning just putting stickers everywhere. So when I first started Moosey, I basically found this. I just over the time just put it on and it's 99% of the stickers on here are artists we've worked with. There's a little Carl Cashman there, Sick Boy, Mr. Penfold. I could stare at this for hours. As a kid, it was all about graffiti. I just followed it, loved it. I remember that one of the first pieces I saw was the Psycho piece. And then that stemmed into street art when street art came about. I used to be obsessed with design. I used to love kits. I used to stand in the garden just designing kits in my head. Sadly, sadly, my favorite kits were always the Arsenal kits. And how did you get started? That was hard. So initially I was fixing planes and then I left to open up my first gallery in Norwich and didn't take off. So I shut the gallery and then went back into engineering to sort of start again. I'd be fixing things. I'd be under a train at like three in the morning, with, but I, all I was thinking about was art. I'd be finishing work about five in the morning Get a notification that an edition we've just released is sold out and then I'll be running straight from the trains covered in dirt to then shipping out prints. If you look at the pictures of me holding up the prints, because they're, they're my hands by the way. Jodie who works for us, who does all the sort of editing, she had to edit the dirt off my fingernails, off the pictures. Doing the Adriana prints really, that's when things started to change. I'd say most of the best discoveries was when I would, I'd be fixing the trains at like three in the morning and I'd have a little break and I'd just be on my phone. And why did you choose to get into the print market? Me growing up, I could never afford a painting. It was always a print's the only accessible thing I could ever have. So most, most of the stuff you see and most of the stuff we've produced is stuff, like selfishly, is the stuff I want in my house. So I would, I, would, I love prints. I would have always wanted a print. Prints are really going up in price. We're trying our best to sort of keep our prints really humbly priced and affordable. And it's a nice start of the journey. I think a lot of the guys we sort of sell to initially with the prints have now moved on to original works. But this is, this is the first print we ever released. This one here, look, Custard Crime by um, the local artist, John Scarrett. The first one we ever did, that would have been 2015. <laughs> and then like, and then you go from this to like the Robbie Dwee or the Cesar Payet. Yeah. Like, what would be like a new age that's really hard? The, say, the Cesar has the, has, has the most layers, 29 pools. Wow. Like we've got the Tide. That's uh, obviously the one that went crazy in auction. And we sold it for 150 pounds. You see a lot of people buying prints purely for the investment. I think the problem we have now is because the prints we've made have gone up in value so much that a lot of people are, are buying just for that, that reason. And obviously the main aim is to get these prints on the wall. So that's a constant battle for us is working out who the good guys and the bad guys are. It's a problem I never thought I'd have to be honest with you is trying to work out who to sell them to rather than actually getting them sold, you know. This is one, like, one of my favourites, Mr. Penfold. He's one of the first artists I really started following. Then we've got a Moretz. I've got that actually tattooed on my leg. Most, most of the works for the artists I get tattooed on my leg. Moosey Art is going beyond making print editions by making a comeback on the gallery scene. Our business model and our sort of how our hobby is to sort of find really sort of delve deep and find artists that aren't quite out there yet. That's our fun. And then as soon as they they go up into space, you know, then that's that's our time to move on. And why do you think you like so much working with emerging artists? Less politics, <laughs> I guess. It's just more fun. It's it's fun to get stuff out that no one's seen and it's fun to take the risk. It's easy to work with someone that you know is going to sell because because you know, you know. With us it's more of a challenge. 
we do invest a lot into the people we work with. We don't, we don't sort of tie anyone down. We never, never do exclusivity. I think I'm against that. We're definitely sort of in, in a friendship, sort of you can come to us and have a chat. And as well, this is like some of the best artists we haven't even worked with. Like we don't even know who they are yet, you know? It's really exciting. Yeah, I'd like to think of us as an Ajax. It's like a good, a good club where you start your career, you know? And then you, and then you move on and sign for like Juventus. Musiard has taken a turn in the past few years and established himself as a reference when it comes to discovering emerging artists. The artists we work with now really does well, but in five years' time, that might not be the case. It's a bit like a musician, I guess, where you just become uncle, and I'm conscious of that. And that's, I'm always trying to think maybe a year, two years ahead. So a, a successful day for me wouldn't be selling out an addition. A successful day for me would be to find someone and to actually have a first phone call of an artist. My biggest fear is staying relevant. And I've seen, I've seen in the past, you've seen some galleries that you really like and then suddenly they just sort of get forgotten about. And I, don't, I, really, don't want, I really want for us to always be there. But beyond the business, Muzi Art is a unique and fun place where people don't take themselves seriously, but are serious about what they do. Now we're back and I, I love it. I love the fact that we've, we're so lucky to be in a position now where we can actually afford to get a really nice venue. I mean, it's still quite DIY and it's still, it's not very plush, but I like that. We, we really want people to see these works, generally. We really want people to see them because most of the stuff you see on images isn't as good in the flesh. So we've got Adriana and then in August we have Yok and the Torogoff brothers and some of the releases we're doing are great. There's some really exciting prints coming out. Thanks so much Fraser for sitting down to chat. Make sure you follow them on their Instagram as I know some really good surprise drops are coming soon. Sweet, but all good. I'm trying to like keep my hands still. Have you seen the Anchorman episode where he's like, you don't know what to do with his hands and you're asking me a question and you're just doing that. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.